Hello, and you're back again. Uh, we've just covered in our last video um, a figure of eight on a bite. We talked about a bite being a name for a loop and a piece of rope, and how that's useful as a temporary fixing knot to tie on to things, connect on to things, and um, that we might want to undo that fixing um, uh, in, in, in a short term. We don't want it to be permanent. And you're sitting thinking to me, Des, great, you've got one of these really cool, clever carabiners that allows you to open it and, and, and clip onto that, and that's great, you've got that loop, you can do that, but what about when you haven't got that type of a click mechanism? What about when you've got something you have to tie it onto itself? How can we, how can we do that? Um, and that is where a figure of eight follow through type knot comes in really handy. Um, so how do we tie a figure of eight follow through? So the first thing I'm gonna assume is I'm gonna be tying this, this particular knot, I'm gonna assume this is tying on to myself. I've got a climbing harness attached to me down here and I've decided I'm gonna be tying into that. So I'm gonna tie this knot with the, the climbing rope here leading away from me as if I'm gonna be climbing up that at some point and the actual working end rope going to be tying in my in my hands here and that allows me to look down as i'm doing it as i'm tying myself on the climbing harness and see what i'm doing so the first thing i'm going to do is tie a normal figure of eight as we've shown a couple of times before we take a loop round and come back through and then back through the hole here now the first thing you'll have noticed is i've got quite a long length of cord here in my hand <clears throat> and with time you'll be able to judge how much you need for this for this knot um, but we need enough here to be able to feed it back through and take, take through the, the follow through tying steps of this knot. The next thing you'll notice is I haven't tightened this part of the knot up yet. So I've left it quite loose and enough room to follow through as such. Because all I'm going to do with this free end is after having looped it through whatever fixing or, or harness or tie on point I need to, looping it through that, I'm going to follow back through this knot and I'm going to exactly follow through this piece of rope all the way back through the direction it has come to make this knot. If you do that, really simply, don't try and be clever, don't try anything smart, just follow that back through, you'll find you get a perfect figure of eight follow through. So we go back through the hole we came through, we go underneath uh, the main piece of rope that'll be, that'll be holding us, um, back through this piece here, underneath, that's uh, right, round, and underneath one last time. And that then gives us, as we have before, something that looks like this. Quite nice, quite neat and tidy, um, figure of eight in the knot, in our rope. And you can see I've tightened that all a bit. Now, when you're climbing, um, it's quite important that this knot is right and therefore being able to look at that and say, yep, yeah, that looks like a good, clean eight. So I know that knot's probably been tied quite well. I'm quite happy with that. But ropes get wet. They get jerked about a bit. Um, you tie it when you're tired and cold and, and miserable and don't pay enough attention. So sometimes we want to put in a little bit of extra safety. And sometimes this, this loose end, this loose tail of rope can be quite long. And if you're climbing or doing things, you know, this is obviously quite short, but if it's quite long, it can get in the way um, and be a danger in itself. So what we can then tie in this rope, both to tidy away this loose tail, but also to give us a slight additional piece of, of additional safety on the knot, is to put a stopper knot in here on this on this um, little this this current little tail. Now there is two ways to do that. You could just tie a simple stopper knot um, like this, um, which then puts a nice stopper in. So if this rope here tries to slide through the knot, you can see how it will jam in the knot as it pushes through. Or, if that's a particularly long piece of rope, and to make it slightly slightly tidier and a little bit safer, <clears throat> we can take this loose tail and tie a stopper knot round this actual body of the main, the main climbing rope that we'll be climbing on. So we come round and tie a, a normal overhand stopper knot in there like that, tighten that up, and you can see how we now have our figure of eight knot down here, our main piece of rope that will be holding us as we climb here, and then this stopper knot here. If this knot loosens, becomes work free over time, it's been on there for a long time, becomes wet or, or unusable, um, and this starts to slip through and slip through and slip through and slip through, and we get to this point here, 
you find it will jam and not pull through any further. And that's giving you an additional little bit of safety on this knot to keep you alive and well. Um, this particular knot you see in front of you, the figure of it follow through with just one simple little stopper knot in the end. I have used countless times, mostly in climbing. Um, I've used a sub-aqua uh, mountaineering. I've tied myself onto a helicopter, a helicopter harness or strap uh, with that. Um, it has yeah, kept me alive more than once. I have come off while climbing and stuff like that and being attached with uh, you know a good uh, secure knot like this to a climbing harness um, that is safely tied um, has kept me alive when I've come off the side of a, a mountain while, while, while climbing. Um, and kept me safe. So this is pretty useful to know. It's simple and easy to do um, and it gives you a nice secure loop um, on, on, on a piece of rope. So that was a figure of eight uh, follow through. Um, I hope you like that one um, and that's definitely one to remember for the future. A really simple to tie. Thanks guys.